workshop. Today's workshop is on event planning. Okay, so let's start off with the event purpose. There are different types of purposes for why you guys would run an event. It could be a celebration, uh, it could be for, for educational purposes, for marketing purposes, for fundraising purposes, that's a big one everybody likes, uh, spiritual, cultural, or religious purposes, and advocacy purposes. What is a leader? A leader is the person um, responsible for a few things when you're doing event planning. So the first thing is um, the research part of event planning, which we'll also get into. Um, forming the partnerships is another thing that the leader is usually takes responsibility for. Um, designing, planning, coordinating, and evaluating the event. So all of these stages of event planning falls back on the one leader. So it's, it's important um, that you have a really strong leader. So the first thing um, when, when you're a leader that you have to consider is um, time management. So this is really determining um, what's urgent versus what's important. So there's things that are gonna come up that's urgent. What I, I consider like urgent is when a funder calls you with questions after you've submitted a grant. That is probably a priority for you <coughs> as the leader. But something like um, calling the artists to let them know if they got into the show or not, that is important. But that could also be delegated. So you don't wanna, um, as the leader, you don't wanna take up your time doing those important things because you have to learn to rely on other people to do those important things. So at the end of the day, you're really responsible for the finances. So what does that mean? It means like your budget, your budget that you have gained through grants, through sponsorships, um, as well as even just your, your resources. How will you manage those things? And so you wanna keep track of those um, in a budget few things to keep in mind when you're researching and developing for your event. So um, you should take into consideration um, finances, resources, partnerships, politics, the environment, and timing. In terms of um, the design is before you have to think about what's feasible. Some people are really visionary when they're doing events and it's like I want to do this event for millions of people and that's great and stuff but sometimes you don't always have the, the money or the resources or just you know the manpower to get those things done so you really have to think about um, what's feasible. Two things about sponsorship is they, they want to see that the market that they're targeting is the market that or the audience that you're going to draw out. So for example, um, 106 in York attracts urban youth ages, you know, 15 to 30 from uh, Toronto's Northwest neighborhoods. Um, if Blackberry knows that it attracts this audience, likely they're going to support your event because that's the same sort of demographic or niche that they're looking to promote their product to. The second reason why you would get sponsorship is for the recognition that they'll gain. So ensuring that their logo is going to be on your program guide, is going to be on your flyer, whatever you have, that they're going to gain some recognition so that um, the people that are coming to your event will more likely use them in the future kind of thing. Or will see that, that pro it's like product placement. Think about the, the five senses that we all have. So feeling, hearing, tasting, seeing, and smelling. The five senses, right? So, let's start with C. Does the mood of the visual aspects evoke or encourage any specific emotions from your attendees? So, these are questions you wanna ask yourself when trying to figure out what type of event you're gonna throw. So always take into consideration what other people want to see, what they don't want to see, what they expect to see, and then put, implement that into what you want everybody else to see, all right? So let's move on to hearing. If you're planning an event with music or public speaking, it is imperative to provide sounds that will connect with and encourage attendees to come out, feel welcome, and have a good time. 
just off audio and sounds alone, you got people. So take that into consideration when looking for a DJ, when looking for your performing acts, when looking for, um, when, when putting together your audio commercials on the radio. What's going to get them to listen? And what's going to really get them attached by you know, them listening to it? Smell. If you are cooking at an event, if there's going to be food being served at an event, make sure it's good smelling food and not the, not, cultura, don't fry fish, please. Do not fry fish. All right, taste. Now, unless you're throwing a food event, taste doesn't really, really uh, apply to you guys. Last but not least, feel, right? The feel of an event. Obviously, it's not based on texture, like it says here but more the themes or the premise of the event and the audio-visual aspects that support that. For instance, if you're going for a more mature vibe, you would ask attendees to dress more appropriately and more according. Five Ws, you can tell me. Who, what, when, where, why. Who, what, when, where, why. So let's start with who. When planning your event, you must figure out your target demographic and, your, and who your event is trying to cater to. For instance, um, the the art reach um, fundraising the, the the funders speed dating. I don't think young kids would really flourish within that atmosphere because the concept of dating alone is kind of way over the head. Now speed dating with funders is like <laughs> boom. That's not for kids, right? So understand who your demographic is and make sure that you really really. Um, cater to the people you're trying to reach out to. The what in event planning applies to the type of event you want to throw. Is it a fundraiser? Is it a cultural event? Is it a festival celebration? Is it a community fair? Is it a gala or a ball? Is it a one-off event? Is it a reoccurring weekly, monthly, or yearly event? All these must be factored into your event planning process because that will help determine the venue, it will help determine the time of the event, the planning process, and It'll help you figure out your demographic also. So now off to when. When planning an event, dates are key to the success of your event. Um, for instance, if you're planning a youth event and then you want to have it during the day, um, around June, the end of the month of June, do you think a lot of people are going to come? A youth event? Are you that no? Yeah, because at the end, like near the end of June, no, it's, exam. it's exam time. So you're not going to throw an event during the day during exam times, right? Where, when planning an event, it's all about location, location, location. Um, is your location accessible to the public, or is it a private event? Is it secluded enough? Uh, if you're going to throw a, a boat party, boom, very secluded. If you're going to throw a public event, Young and Dundas, Nathan Phillips Square, Scarborough Town Center, Albert Campbell Square. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, make sure that wherever you choose aligns with the main purpose, the demographic, and the date of your event or events. The venue you choose is also key in how successful your event can potentially be. Uh, I.e., nightclub versus halls, parks versus city squares, a boat cruise versus beach event, indoor theater versus outdoor theater. Why? Last but not least, this is one of the most important questions to ask, if not the most important question to ask when event planning. Why are you doing this event? Everybody has your set purpose. Why is almost the first question you ask? So when you ask yourself why, and it's like, why am I doing this? So I'm doing this for that reason. So who agrees with me in that reason? Where would those people go? And what would they want to do? So it's like, why is that first question you have to ask? You need to have your set purpose when figuring out what you're doing. Contracts and waivers. Contracts are very important. Um, Depending, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing a small scale community event or a large festival, it's something that will benefit both parties. Um, we always have contracts with all the artists that we do, whether it's um, somebody who's from Toronto who's just up and coming, or if we're trying to ba book big scale large artists from both within Canada and outside. Um, it's just to ensure that people are accountable to each other and that you make sure those people are there on the day of, and that whether it be food vendors, whether it be artists, whether it be um, police, it doesn't matter. Like Whoever you're trying to get there and be a part of your day, it's important to sign contracts. I mean, waivers is very important in terms of photography and film. I can't stress enough how important it's becoming, and it is right now, to document. Document, document, document everything that you're doing. 
Um, we talked about it earlier, um, just accessing the people that you know, asking friends who are up and coming photographers or videographers. Um, and there's a lot of resources in the city for you to even rent equipment um, for for lower scale prices or for no cost at all. There are people willing to help you. Um, if you want to talk about that after, I can talk to anybody about that later on. Um, so document, because that's what's going to allow you to continue your event. If you want to make it an annual event, if you want to do it the next year, if you want to do something else, or if you want to help somebody else do something in the area that you're working in to support each other, it's important to have those that evidence that, um, that you're doing something that matters and that's important and that people want.